In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to compare fractions, decimals, and percentages. In the last lesson, we um, learned how to convert between the three, and now we're going to take different numbers and compare them. So um, let's talk about the following symbols. The symbol um, that you see here, this right here is called the greater than symbol. So whatever number is on the left-hand side of the symbol is bigger than the number that's on the right-hand side of the symbol. For example, um, 4 is greater than 2. The next symbol is the less than symbol. It works the opposite way. Whatever number is on the left-hand side, for example, negative 8, will be less than the number that's on the positive side, for example, 10. And then the last um, symbol is the equal sign. So this just means that both numbers on um, either side of the equal sign are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's first look at the first um, two decimals. I'm given two negative decimals. So try to think about a number line and how a number line um, has zero in the center and then it's followed by one, two, three, four, etc. And then on the other, other side, it has negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4, etc. You can see that this um, is moving on the negative side. It's kind of like backwards. So looking at our decimal number up here, we have negative 8.4 and negative 8.9. You can see that our negative 8 and our negative 8 are identical. But the difference comes in when you hit that 4 and the 9. So we have to ask ourselves, which one's bigger? So if you look at our number line, if we continued on in the negative direction, we would eventually hit negative 9. So you can see that negative 4 is closer to 0, which makes it bigger. Therefore, negative 8.4 is going to be a bigger number. So we're going to use the greater than sign for this, um, this one. All right, let's look at the next decimal. All right, I like to work from left to right. So if I look at my zeros, I have zero and zero as my whole number. And then I have a zero and a zero for my tenths place. And I have a two and a two for my hundredths place. But here's where things change, my thousandths place. It looks like my two, two um, is going to be a bigger number because this is not, these are not two negative numbers. So I'm going to use the less than symbol. Okay. So in the last two examples, we've just been working with decimals. So now let's work with a percent and a decimal. So remember, if you're going to compare something, they have to be in the same format. So I have a percentage and a decimal. You can either change your percent into a decimal or you can change your decimal into a percent. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and since 24% is on the left and I'm kind of always working left to right, I'm going to move this percentage into a decimal. So I'm going to put my decimal between my four and percent and I'm going to move it one, two spaces. So really I have the number 0.24 and you can put your zero out front. So if we were to compare these two, you can see that um, my two is in my same tenths position, then I have a four in my hundredth position, and then you'll notice that I have, um, on the right hand side, I have a two in my thousands place, but I don't have anything here, which means that it's zero. So therefore, the two is greater than the zero, which is going to give me the less than symbol, because 242 thousandths um, is going to be a larger number than 24%. Okay, three fourths, and seven, um, 73%. I can put, bo I can put um, the three-fourths into a percentage or I can put 73 into a fraction. It doesn't matter which way you go. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put three-fourths into a percentage. So by doing that, I'm going to divide the two. So I'm going to divide three divided by four. I'm going to go ahead and add my zero and add my decimal. And um, it looks like um, 4 times 7 is going to give me 28. So I can go ahead and subtract doing long division. And I'm going to bring down a 20 or a 0 to make a 20. And 4 goes into 25 times. And um, let me go ahead and move this, which gives me a nice remainder of 0. So therefore, my fraction here is 0.75. But I'm still not comparing um, you know, the same thing because I have to go ahead and change my decimal into a percentage by moving the decimal over twice. 
So really, this is just going to be 75% and 73%. So obviously, 75% is a better test grade than 73%. So I'm going to say greater than. Okay, let's do some more. All right, we're gonna go ahead and compare these ones now. Now I have a, another percent and a decimal. Let's go ahead and change the decimal on the right-hand side to a percent. I'm gonna move it one space, two spaces to the right, and my new number is going to be 0.33%. So 0.33% is, is being compared to 0.03%. So if you look at the first tenths place, I see a zero and I see a three. Because three is larger than zero, that means that the 33% is going to be larger. So I'm going to use my less than symbol. Because 0.03% is less than 0.0033. All right, one fifth and 0 0.15. All right, uh, it looks to me like, um, I don't know. Um, we could go the other way this time. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and change 0 0.015. Um, actually, no. I always liked putting things into decimals. I think it's easier to see. So let's go ahead and take our one fifth and um, let's go ahead and divide it. So one divided by five. I'm going to add my decimal and my zero, and it looks like it's going to go in there twice. So I have 0.2. So my one fifth is really just 0.2 or two tenths. And I can see that um, 0.2 is going to be larger than 0.15, so my symbol is going to be greater than. Okay, I have another decimal and a percent. So if I look at this, um, I'm going to go ahead and, I don't know, I'm going to take my decimal and turn it into a percent. So I'm going to jump over 1, 2. That's going to give me 2.5% compared to my 25%. Um, it looks like 25% is going to be larger, so I'm going to use my less than symbol. And the last one here, 1.25 and 1 eighth. Um, you might be thinking, well, 1.25, I know that I have a whole number here. So um, in 1 eighth, if I have a, you know, if I have a, um, a pizza and I ha eat 1 eighth of the pizza, I'm eating a tiny portion. So this one might be a little bit more um, obvious to just recognize, but let's go ahead and do the conversion just to be sure. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to convert my 1 eighth um, into a decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 8 goes into 10 once. I'm going to bring down a 2. And I'm going to carry down my 0. And that's going to be a 2. And I'm going to carry down one more 0. And my decimal is going to end up being 0.125. So um, they look very similar to each other. But since I have that whole number 1 in my first decimal, that is definitely going to be larger. So my, my symbol is going to be greater than. Okay, now I'm going to throw something in. I'm going to throw in some scientific notation from um, um, last unit. All right, 4.2 times 10 to the third power and 5.4 times 10 to the second power. So I'm, or, I'm comparing scientific notation here. So there's a couple things I need to look at. First of all, I need to look at my exponents. That is the number one thing to look at. If you have a situation where you have two exponents that are different numbers, meaning one's bigger than the other, then that automatically tells you that your answer is going to be um, um, the number, the higher exponent is going to be larger than the lower exponent. So in our case, we're going to say greater than. Now we have 1 half and 5.01 times 10 to the negative 1. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. One half. I know that one half, isn't that going to be 0.5? We probably have that one memorized. So if we think about scientific notation, um, we want, um, we want uh, 0.5 either to be written in scientific notation or we want 5.01 times 10 to the negative 1 to be written in scientific notation or in, um, in a decimal form. So let's go ahead and take our scientific notation and let's actually write them as a decimal. If you remember correctly, I'm going to look at that um, exponent and that's what type of number I want to create. I want to create a smaller number. So I'm going to take my decimal and I'm going to move them over to the left one space. There it is. My standard form of this scientific notation is going to be 
501 thousandths. So looking at this, looking at which one is bigger, I can say that 0 0.501 is going to be slightly bigger than my um, 0.5. All right, let's look at another one. I border, um, I have scientific notation and I have a percentage. So again, you can um, you can do a couple of things here. I'm going to take my scientific notation and I'm going to transfer it into standard form. So I'm going to make him a smaller number because of my exponent. And I'm going to say 0.875. That's my standard form. And now I have 87.5%. Well, let's go ahead and change 80, 0.875 into a percentage. One, two. So I'm going to have 87.5%. Oh, what do you know? These two numbers are equal. All right, 0 0.08 and 8.4 times 10 to the negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my negative 2 and I'm going to move my decimal. I'm going to move over one, two spaces. So I have 0 0.084. And of course over here I have 0 .08, already a decimal, so I can see that um, my right side is going to be larger. Okay, now let's just go ahead and compare some scientific notations. Let's go a little bit deeper here. All right, the first two examples, um, again, like I said earlier, focus on your exponents. You'll notice that I have two of the exponents that are identical. If they are identical, you cannot use them anymore. You can't look at them to determine which one is bigger. At that point, you have to look at the base number. My base numbers are 5.2 and 5.4. Since 5.4 is larger, well, that's my symbol. I'm going to use less than because my 5.4 is larger than 5.2. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, always start with your exponents. If I look at my negative 2 and negative 7, um, it's kind of tricky. It looks like 7 is a larger number, but it isn't. We're in the negative, so remember, it's always it's backwards. Negative 2 is actually closer to 0. So automatically, right then, I don't need to look at that base number. I can just look at my exponents, and negative 2 is larger. Same thing. Exponents. I have a 9, and I have a negative 3 in my next example. Clearly, 9 is larger than negative 3, which is going to make the number on the left much larger than the number on the right. And again, I have exponents negative 4 and negative 3. The larger of the two is the one that's closest to 0 on the number line, which is my negative 3. So I'm going to say less than. Now, just for example purposes, um, let's say in this last example, let's say I changed this exponent on the right-hand side to a negative 4. If I change that to a negative 4, then I, at that point I would have the same exponents. I would have to look at my base number to determine which one's larger. And in this unique case, they would be equal numbers. Okay, I believe that is it for the lesson on, um, on I'm sorry, not converting, but comparing fractions, decimals, and percents, and in a little bit of scientific notation.